August uh, Rochester Downtown Development Authority uh, meeting uh, for August 18, 2021. Madam uh, Director, the roll, please. Ben Giovanelli. Present. Mayor Bixon. Here. Bob Bloomingdale. Here. Tanya Karsten. Here. Eric Diana. Here. Lisa Germani Williams. Here. Paul Haig. Chris Johnson. Tony LaPuma. Marilyn Trent. Ann Peterson. Here. Don Sinkowitz. Here. We have a quorum. Excellent. Uh, thank you, everybody, for making it tonight. Uh, last month, as you may or may not, well, we would know because we didn't come, but uh, we didn't have a meeting last month. But for those on TV, uh, we uh, the agenda was super light, so we figured we would uh, uh, kick the proverbial can down the road since it was July and beautiful and nobody wanted to come to a DDA meeting. So uh, now it's August and beautiful, and here we are. So, um, so thank you for uh, your attendance this evening. We appreciate it. Uh, first on the agenda is the approval of the meeting minutes from way back in June 16, 2021. Uh, is there any uh, comment with respect to the meeting uh, minutes, or is there a uh, motion there? So moved. Uh, motion by the mayor. Second. Uh, support. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you. Audience comments? Uh, the audience that we have is all regularly scheduled, although I think we're going to. So <laughs> tonight, just so everybody knows, tonight we're kind of, uh, we're running, uh, Christy and I are running sort of a skeleton crew, so it may, <laughs> we're wearing a lot of hats tonight, so it may or may not, so we may not, may or may not stick to the agenda totally, but uh, um, Christy's going to, I think we're going to do the, uh, the big check now. Okay, good. Do the big check now. Okay, excellent. All right, for anyone who's wondering, um, behind me, and we'll be introducing them shortly, uh, Teresa Doan from Genesis Credit Union and John Bry, our friend from Mesa Oakley County. Um, we had reported earlier this summer that we are the recipient of a Spirit of Main Street grant. And so I guess I would turn things over to uh, John and Teresa if anybody wants to speak to what that is. Sure. Uh, yes, because I'm looking at you. Do we have to go up here? I think you have to go to that one. All right. this one? Yeah. Yes. I think I'll just make sure it's on. I was just telling Christy, <laughs> I made the fastest drive time from Franklin to Rochester just now. <laughs> so that's what the sonic booms were. As we're coming all over the county. So I was teasing her because when I started, they said it takes 20 minutes to get anywhere in Oakland County. That's a lie because we're the size of Rhode Island. <laughs> that's not possible. So it's my honor to be here tonight to, uh, to confirm upon you guys the uh, Spirit of Main Street Grant Recipient Award for uh, the text messaging program that the DDA applied for to implement as part of your marketing strategy for the downtown. It was an excellent application, and it's been allocated $2,500 with our partners at Genesis Credit Union. And so Teresa is here tonight to make the presentation on behalf of our partner Genesis to you. So I'll turn it over to Teresa. I just give you the big check. I'll, I'll take the big check. <laughs> <laughs> the, high, the, the big guy. <laughs> uh, so when we received um, applications, we received quite a few applications. And what we, what we do is together with Oakland County, we go through those applications and try to decide and, and look for what makes the most sense, what do we think actually has some, some, some power behind it that's actually going to last and do something great in the community and not just, okay, here's the money, we'll do this, and then on to the next thing. And working with Christy is always the projects. I was just telling her, like, she comes up with the best ideas. The projects are always well thought out are going to succeed and then usually are picked up by you know other communities as best practices so we're real pleased to be able to uh, present the check and uh, look forward to working with you in the future Best impression of Ed McMahon. So, Christy, Ben, why don't you guys come up and we'll do the, I'll do the picture honors with you guys, the handoff here. I feel like we have anytime advice. anybody wants to bring a big check to the meeting, they are more than welcome. I will change the agenda. Uh -uh. <laughs> I'm glad I could hide behind the check. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Try to put that in the ATM machine. <laughs> sure, yeah. Uh, thank you so much for that. We really appreciate the, uh, the kind words, certainly, for Christy, but uh, she already knows all that stuff anyway. So. <laughs> um, but no, in all seriousness, um, you know, as a community, pulling together and trying to do things on the fly and, and create, you know, um, uh, making lemonade out of lemons, as it were, 
Um, you know, our staff, we're blessed to have a really good staff that does that. So we appreciate the recognition and the support from uh, certainly the county and uh, also from uh, Genesis, who I happen to do all my banking with, so just so you know. Um, so anyway. Yeah, right. Well, no, yeah, right. Yeah, just, just like totally. I just had nothing to do with it, but uh, yeah, this is not an elected position. They just they put me up here as a, you know, a monkey to kind of keep things going. But, uh, um, but anyway, thank you so much. We really appreciate the recognition. So thank it, you. If I can just uh, follow up the texting service, um, everyone will start hearing about that in September. So that is our big fall rollout in advance of holiday. Awesome. Um, so we're pretty excited about that. Yeah, we didn't fantastic. want to get caught up in all of our summer. Yeah, yeah, sure. Stuff. Understood. <laughs> we have so much to do. But Genesis is always a great partner with us and sponsors quite a few of our events throughout the year. So we appreciate that. Here, here. Anybody else? It's awesome. Well, we got some tough decisions this latest round of grant applications. We had 17. Wow. Mm. Nine different Mainstream Open County communities. So, yeesh. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. No, no pressure. pressure. <laughs> uh, once again, thanks, John, for your support, too. We really appreciate it. Uh, all right, so uh, other audience, I seeing none, I think we'll go ahead and move forward to our liaison reports. Uh, first would be uh, Ann Peterson, City Council. Thank you. So uh, we actually had an update from Senator Mallory McMorrow um, at our last meeting on giving us a state of affairs um, uh, at the state and where things are, and they're in the budget process right now, so they'll be working towards that here soon uh, when they're back in session. And then we actually, of course, are having the Front Porch Story event uh, that we approved for the 24th of um, August. And some of the other things that we've been working on is some staffing um, in regards to our finance department and public works. And um, also um, moving towards uh, getting a compensation and benefit study done uh, so we know which direction to go in uh, with the changing times. And then we had various updates. Um, also received a report regarding the uh, Parking Advisory Committee uh, that had finally met again. So um, hoping we can get some things moving in that direction on that in the future. Fantastic. The work continues, which is fantastic. So thank you for that. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. uh, Chamber of Commerce. Marilyn is not here. She is, uh, I think, down in down south someplace. She's someplace where there's a lot of water. Yeah, I see, yeah it's warm and, and, and on a boat I saw yesterday. Yes. So I think uh, so we'll we'll, uh, we'll defer the Chamber of Commerce uh, to the extent there's any information that she wants to pass along. We'll include it in the packet for the next uh, uh, next meeting for us. Uh, <coughs> Historical Commission Don Sinkowitz, welcome. Thank you. Uh, we held our meeting. Fantastic. Uh, thanks a ton for your uh, report, Don. We appreciate it. Uh, Paul Haig is also MIA this evening. He is in Santa Fe. Yes. Uh, so, but uh, Christy, I think you might be able to step in. And this is very Done easy. It. So PSD did not have a quorum last week, okay. so they'll be meeting in September. <laughs> got it. So it's everybody's got summer itis, and I don't blame them one <laughs> stinking bit. So that's fine. Yes. Uh, but the uh, the work of the principal shopping district does continue on. Um, Christy and her staff um, are already you know we see the stuff that's going on around us. So it's not like it's just it's just the actual board did not meet. So yes, in August actually we would have uh, asked for approvals for all of our remaining holiday events. So we try to be month. like a quarter ahead. Sure. So uh, the the uh, the heart beats on, as it were. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for that. Uh, 6A. So this is kind of a weird one. So I was like, <laughs> it's the election of the DDA officer. So we were supposed to do this last meeting. And, yes. And we didn't because we didn't have the meeting. Correct. So now we're doing it this meeting. 
um, a communication was sent around regarding, you know, nominations for people for the different positions or anybody that had an interest we had talked about, you know, send Christy your information. And um, I think we had zero. Uh, Tony said he would if we had to. Okay. All right. <laughs> so I don't know if it's, if it's telling that nobody wanted to take these leadership positions. And so the, the uh, consensus is is that uh, this, the current officers, myself as director, uh, or as um, uh, chairman, uh, Tony as vice chair, and then Marilyn Trent as secretary, would be uh, repeated for next year. Now both of those individuals are not here to speak for themselves, so that's their problem and not mine. Correct. So we will, uh, you know. So, but the, I, I, I joke. They they know uh, that they, yeah. they've already both expressed to me that they want to continue their role. So. Uh, with that, um, it's uh, the floor is open. Um, since I'm on the slate, I'm not going to. Yes. So uh, what we would be looking for is if someone would like to make a motion to uh, continue with the existing board officers is what we're looking for, or unless someone decides they want to yeah, step, step in up. and do something else. I'll make a motion. Okay. I'll second that motion. Yep. Oh, good. Okay. All right. Well. <laughs> Working well. There we go. Well, thank you. I Heard? appreciate that. And, okay. Uh, happy to serve. It's been fun. It was. Uh, uh, after 12 years on council and then getting into this has been kind of my tiptoeing out of public life, but I can't quite get out. So it's, uh, it's the long toes, I guess, or something. But uh, no, I really enjoy it. And the work has been uh, fantastic. And especially over the, um, you know, the course of the last 18 months, it's just been, you know, uh, 50 pounds of dirt in a five pound bag. But I think we've been able to uh, do some good stuff. So I appreciate that. Uh, all right. So with oh, that, there's on. a, I'm we, sorry. Hold, I'm sorry. There, I saw another hand up. Oh, no, I was just going to make a comment. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh I just want to make a comment and actually thank you for being in that role um, during that time, because I think your leadership helped, um, you know, steer the DDA into a good direction and keep everybody focused. So it's been awesome to have you sitting there again in this. Thank so you. Appreciate it'll be good it. for the following year. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Uh, any other comment uh, with that? Uh, is it a voice vote or is it a... Uh... We're not spending any money, so it could oh, just okay. be... Oh, yeah, well, nobody, right? So. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So uh, with that motion, all in favor, aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Thank God. Uh, motion passes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank right. you for that. All right. So be careful what you ask for, Tony and Marilyn. You're, you're back in for another year. Yes. All right, with that, uh, this was um, uh, an important presentation. So as part of my role as uh, chair, I've also sit on some subcommittees, one of which is uh, a master plan sort of review, and I was part of that exercise. I've been part of it uh, twice now, or uh, two, two or three times. But uh, anyway, so we were given a presentation on some updates uh, from Michelle Bennett uh, last week, I think it was, and um, I had asked her to come to the DDA, and we'll specifically address those items on the, that that are on the DDA. Uh, through the course of the discussion, um, it was clear that uh, the, sort of the cadence, right? So, uh, what she, the deck that she's been putting together, the work that her firm has been working on is go, uh, Beckett Raider, sorry, is going to be going to the Planning Commission. They're going to act on it next week, I think. Uh, and then it's going to go on to council, and then there's a 60-day shot clock of some sort. And I'm sure she'll walk us through that. So anyway, time was of the essence to get this in. But I wanted to get, and the planning commission chair asked us to make sure that, you know, he, he, the, that the planning commission had our input before they reviewed, uh, you know, the DDA portion of this. So uh, I'm going to turn it over to Michelle Bennett from Bucket and Raider and have her go ahead and walk us through sort of the DDA portion of the master plan uh, stuff that's going on behind the scenes so we can discuss it. If there's any changes, recommendations, head nodding, hating, whatever, we'll get through that. She'll incorporate that into the amount, that, the, the items that go to uh, planning. And uh, I, I think at the end of this, I would like to have us uh, make a formal recommendation to the Planning Commission that, we, you know, based on what we've seen, we think the direction's accurate. And I think that would carry a great deal of weight. So, Michelle, thank you for coming here this evening. I know there was debate about staying and going, you know, doing Zoom or having you here live, and I'm really glad that you uh, were able to come. So thanks. So, excuse me, does she need to be up here? Yeah. Actually, you know what? Do we have a here. hand mic? Or just, yeah. Here, here. I'm sorry, we're having to, uh, you know, uh, with everything that's going on, we've had to sort of redo the room Hold as it, it works. So, let's yeah. see. Or if you want to go there, and I can swipe for you. If you want to go to the podium, your choice. I'll, uh, I'll see. <laughs> it's not weird. Don't goes. worry, we'll, we'll get through it. Okay. <laughs> But everyone can hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, we're good. Okay. We can hear you just on TV. There. That's the issue. Okay. Well, good evening. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I will just touch on some highlights from the master plan as they relate to issues um, that would be of concern to the DDA. So you're getting a 
real highlights uh, reel this evening. So I've never done this. Whoop, oh, oh, that's oh, way oh, too oh, far. <laughs> okay. Got it. Okay. So just brief introductions. Um, I'm a planner with Beckett and Rader. We've been working on the master plan um, for a little over a year now. And um, there were several subcommittees that were formed um, to help us break down certain topics so we can get a deeper dive into mm -hmm. those. So I have been working, um, like Ben mentioned, he's on some of them. So there has been some representation um, from the DDA. Christy was at our um, visioning session. And then I've been working a lot with uh, city staff as well for some background um, details that need to be in the plan. And like I said, I'm going to introduce what a master plan is and then just some relevant findings for the DDA. So um, how many were around when the last master plan was written? Okay, so a fair amount of you have a good idea. Um, it's the most comprehensive document there is um, for a city. It's a, it's a public policy document, so it's looking um, sometimes up to 20 to 25 years in the future and trying to coordinate um, all of our existing plans under this and to really make sure that we've sort of gained consensus on the direction we want to go. It's principal purpose from the state legislative point of view is that it serves as a basis for the zoning ordinance. And so that when we're making local law, it is based on a comprehensive plan. So you can see here some of the things that it discusses and I just highlighted downtown since that's what we'll be going over. And that Rochester has really done a good job of maintaining this. The last one was from 2014. And so every five to 10 years is a good period to be updating this document. So quickly, just some demographics I wanted to share with you that are really good, uh, I would say, for a DDA, um, is that we don't see this. I, I work all over the state of Michigan, and we don't see an explosion of young households really anywhere. Um, that is coupled with the fact that you have an aging, um, that should say baby boomer uh, generation. But that's happening statewide, nationwide, right? But the fact that that you have younger people moving in at the same time is really um, encouraging for, for a downtown, for the school districts, for attracting more families. Um, so I just wanted to show you another thing that's unique really in Michigan is that you have a growing population. Um, the city just asked us now that the 2020 census is out to add that. So we are doing that this week so that we can get it in time for the planning commission. You also have growing um, ethnic diversity, which is um, fantastic for, you know, business starts and having a really um, exciting mix of people and businesses downtown. Okay, so every, I believe it's every three years, the city of Rochester sends out um, a survey to households. And this is really valuable because um, it's, a, it's a much better sample than we can get with online surveys, right? Because it's equally distributed. Um, so these results are really great. They're really astounding. And so I wanted to share them with you. Um, most of them come from the section of the survey that was asking about the local economy. And from the community's point of view, the downtown is really the heart of the economy and you've got really glowing uh, results here. So people um, rated the diversity of businesses as excellent, the appearance of downtown. I mean, 95% of people that responded said that it's excellent. And I can send these to you if the city hasn't, but there's a long list of comments. Um, so people get to rate and then they also get to provide open response. And so here's one that we just pulled for you. Historic preservation of the downtown is paramount to the vibe of the city. So people feel like, um, like I said earlier, it really is the heart of the city. So, and I thought I saw on today's agenda that, are you doing some visioning today as well? Okay. Uh, next month. Oh, next month. Okay. 
So um, Christy sent me the results from your visioning from a couple years ago. And so I went through those. I included those in the master plan. One of the things we like to do is make sure all of our plans are aligned so we're not duplicating work with taxpayer dollars, right? So we pulled some of the major findings from there and included them. So um, big draws to downtown, it's probably not news to, to any of you, but um, entertainment options. And then some areas of improvement would include um, more green space, river access, and even more entertainment options. So I made sure to include both of those survey, um, the survey and the visioning results. Another exercise we went through is we looked at all the vision statements from 2014, and we held a session not long ago where we asked um, community members to come in and really kind of rate their relevance still, tell us if they agreed or disagreed with them, and then helped us modify them. So this was the 2014 version. I will say that there wasn't a lot of input on this one in particular from the community, but I um, try to beef it up a little because I looked at the DDA's vision statement. And so I tried to paraphrase that because I believe it's longer than this, but I tried to distill it to its essence so that this will, um, that the vision of the master plan for the downtown will align with the vision that the DDA, DDA has come up with. So. Do you think just looking at this that there's anything major missing from this vision? We spent forever coming up with the uh, thing, so I'm going to say we're rather proud of it. Yeah. I mean, that definitely encompasses, I think, our vision. It is a long vision statement, probably mm -hmm. longer than it should be because it really isn't a vision statement anymore. I wonder, the one thing I'm seeing is something about community. I mean, I feel like something about a place for community to gather something mm -hmm. along those lines. I feel like that's really the path we've been on for the last couple of years since our vision session. So mm -hmm. if we'd incorporate something like that, I think would be appropriate. Oh, Public I gathering space? Is that? Uh, no, I think it's just that our downtown is a place to gather. Okay. And it's, it's creating the, the sense of community in the broader sense, right? So okay. I think also too, uh, with the visioning session coming up, we'll have enough time to go ahead and drop that in there. So this can actually just be a placeholder right now. And then, um, um, you know, after that, I think we'll end up having a debrief, uh, even during the, the you know, um, the review period, if there's any changes. I suspect you're probably, you know, 90% of the way there anyway. Okay. So, um, sure. but there may be some tweaks once we have the visioning session, the, the update. So instead of having sure. a proposal, you'll have what well, actually people were talking about at that one. So. Okay. And we can talk about the schedule of this process at the end of that. So that will be helpful. <coughs> Okay, this is a little bit outside of the DDA boundaries, but I did want to share this um, because it's close and I think it will have an impact on the DDA if it were to be built. So um, as a part of this process, three sites were selected that could be um, in one instance redeveloped and in two instances developed because they're currently vacant. So this is the Mill Street site, um, not far from Main Street, which is currently vacant. I'm completely empty. And so we brought this to the community and we asked them what they wanted to see there in terms of housing. So a big part of this process is talking about the housing crisis and how we are in need of more units and especially units that are attainable to moderate income households. So um, we rendered the most popular choices. We went through all of the groups and what they said, and we tried to just throw a, a quick 3D rendering available because visually it's much more impactful for people when they can see what something might look like. Um, and so these are, I would say, mid-rise. Mid so the, the brown one would be apartments along that street, and that's about 45 feet, so tops, that's about four stories. And then it's kind of tapered to smaller, to shorter buildings, but access to the river, nature, anything in green is them wanting to preserve some green space. We also ran through the numbers here to see, you know, based on the dimensions and the current zoning, what that would actually mean. And that's why I'm sharing this, because it's so close to downtown, it's within walking distance, that this, you know, has the potential, right? We're just setting up a framework. This is not a guarantee this will happen. This is a vision for what could happen, is that, you know, within a half a mile or so from from the DDA, we could be um, having up to 148 units. 
Um, we go through the trip generation as well because most people care about traffic and how that's going to impact their commute. So we went through all of those numbers as well. Is this going in and out? Okay. So like I said, that's out of the boundaries, but it's close enough where I thought it would be relevant and I wanted to share that. The community did support density and I think they were really understanding the value of density um, near downtown and how that would support local business. Okay, so there's a section called community character and really this has remained largely untouched. Um, from the 2014 version, and that's mainly because everything that was in there, you're already doing well, and there's no reason to change it. So we want to make sure we're maintaining the high architectural standards of downtown to make sure that it um, keeps its historic charm, and that if there is any areas for infill or if someone's going to redevelop them, that they're still continuing to follow those standards and that that's our priority. Um, is again the architectural quality. Um, and then looking through your, your zoning ordinance, those are already in place. So again, we're just reinforcing and saying continue doing this. We're not making any major changes or recommendations here. Okay, complete streets is a concept that we expanded on a little bit. For anyone who's unfamiliar, it sounds like just like what the title says is that we want our streets to be user friendly for everyone, not just vehicles. So that's non-motorized users, users of any sort, pedestrian, bicyclists. It also, um, you know, refers to people who are, you know, physically impaired who might need extra time getting across the street or a little more assistance. And then of course, um, public transportation or ride sharing. So we talked about, we give a definition of what a downtown thoroughfare um, should be, and this is based on NACTO. I'm not going to be able to perfect that acronym, but it's a national transportation organization. Do you know that? Yeah. There, um, that's what our transportation engineers and landscape architects refer to. They're kind of the gold standard for that. Of what a downtown th was that my own voice coming back at me? It was. <laughs> Okay. So we defined that and then we talk about some potential improvements. And um, some of these we know are a little bit more challenging in talking to staff. I think several traffic studies have been done and that a road diet is not necessarily in the cards to be going right down your downtown. Um, but we did put some potential improvements for downtown thoroughfares, and we'll talk about other connections as well. But looking at your left turn lanes, um, evaluating if those are needed, and then trying to make it more of a pleasant environment or walking experience for pedestrians is um, really buffering any car noise or movement from the, the pathways that they're on, and that can be done with less expensive infrastructure. So ideally you'd widen the sidewalk, but if that's out of the car, it's just vegetative buffers. The parallel parking helps as well kind of separate you. I so I, was say, I think our, our biggest problem is, is M150 Main Street is owned by MDOT. We don't have any control yeah. over it. So um, we and asked nicely, but uh, uh, they own it. So right. that's the problem. And even if you, you know, can work with them to put it on their schedule for improvements, that's, that's a long-term goal. So the other connections that we talked about, and there, this was an entire subcommittee, um, was based on downtown connections. And there's basically three different types of paths that they came up with and that you know, we signed off on as planners. Um, and... I'll start with the first one here, bike focused. So that's the, the maroon line, if you guys can see back there. The difference between focused and friendly that we came up with is focused is really the, where we would want to not just make it tolerable, you know, that would be more a friendly style infrastructure, but actually invest in top of the line best, best practices perhaps separated bike lanes, anything that we can do to emphasize um, bicycle paths on that 
on that corridor, as opposed to bike friendly, which is, you know, could be Sharrows, it could be, you know, just a dotted line separating you. Um, it's friendlier to bicyclists, but not kind of the top tier that we're going for. And then, um, sorry, so the bike friendly would be the downtown alleys because we thought that's already separated really from um, higher traffic volume. So that would be a good place to um, have bicyclists access, you know, the downtown putting bike racks back there and, and the such. So Main Street, though, um, we talked about remaining pedestrian focused. So um, because we have these other corridors, we could limit bicycle traffic on Main Street and really just continue to keep it pedestrian scale, which you already have your shorter um, buildings, but the additional kind of um, infrastructure like really highlighting where the crosswalks are, making sure that those, those are always clear um, so people feel safe. If there was time or money for, you know, a refuge on a, on a wider um, boulevard, something like that. And um, really just making sure that they feel that it's as safe and as pleasant to stroll the downtown as you would if you had to drive there and park. Um, so this particular um, discussion was uh, was your predecessor Leah. We had went, went through this, and this, we and this we, I wanted to spend almost an entire meeting just on this because mm -hmm. what we were talking about was um, getting people off the trail into downtown, and then once they're in downtown, you know, having that having bikes uh, the bikers have a, a different um, have have a, have a set of needs. And Chief Shettenhelm, who is an avid biker, was our biker representative. So it happens to be he's also chief police, but he's also a biker. So we spent the entire, a good chunk of the discussion talking about getting people from the trail into, into town, how we're going to do that, um, the different ways. So Michelle just brought up, you know, having dedicated lanes or, you know, that thing and where that would go. And um, Chief's input, as usual, you know, was very insightful as to... Um, you know, making sure that you're not pigeonholing bikers into one certain area because people like to take their bikes as just like, you know, taking their purse, right? It's, it's, it's a function of being, you know, with them. And so having a, a dedicated bike rack in the parking structure, while a great idea, doesn't really help bikers at all because they're going to different spots and they don't want to, like, leave their bike. That's maybe, you know, a couple thousand dollar bike and go, you know, mm -hmm. right? So um, we talked about figuring out ways, um, incentivizing uh, uh, merchants and, and building owners to do stuff behind uh, their places. So as uh, was mentioned, the downtown LA is making them more bike friendly. Uh, we had talked about perhaps some uh, funding. So I'm sure everybody's been through Royal Oak or Ferndale and have seen the bike, dedicated bike paths are there. Um, something along those lines. You know, our biggest problem is is that Rochester is three and a half square miles, and the downtown is not you know enormous, so we don't have a ton of real estate to do do work in. But we do have tons of people coming off the trail that we would love to capitalize on. So we talked about figuring out ways to get them you know ingress egress safely, where where that where that would go efficiently and safely, where that would go, and then um, the DDA perhaps uh, figuring out ways. And, and this is good timing because we're talking about our goals and objectives, is how we're going to you know what capital projects we're going to invest in as, mm -hmm. as time goes on you know, signage and those kind of things to encourage people to come off the trail. So this was actually, um, uh, was, was, was really powerful discussion and uh, very timely. And, and of course, you know, to Michelle's point, this is a, what, what we'd like to see, and it's, it's not going to happen next year, but this is kind of saying this is where we think we ought to be headed. So I wanted to get everybody's input on this particular part as part of the entire thing. So I don't know if you guys want to just talk about it as they come up. There's just a handful of us. There's no sense in keeping it so formal, but just kind of mm -hmm. ask questions. And I'd love to get some, I think it's important to get the feedback because everything that we talk about here tonight is going to be passed along to the planning commission who will take it into consideration. So with that, anybody have any thoughts on sort of this part? I do. Sure, please. Okay, so um, that's something I think that uh, we've lacked a lot in of making sure that we are um, utilizing our trails and that, on, and development together and making the developments more um, 
friendly for, you know, being outdoor activities and taking that into account and having them have places for the people to bike and things like that. So I would love it if the planning commission could actually, you know, incorporate that somehow into when they're looking at that and suggesting it that they, they make their developments part of those, bring those items to make them part of that. So they can, you know, and more focused on that of like, really, how do you drive good development to an area when you have that trail, right, uh, to where you could bring more business in in that, to like really maybe multi-development, develop more properties along these trails in a good fashion to where we can have all of that happen, to where they can get off the bike trail, park their bike, eat lunch or whatever, and get back on and go. And we don't have that, but we have every asset to do that, you know, throughout the whole entire th three square miles that we have, right? So I, w I think that would be awesome, and I'm glad it's been brought up again. Fantastic. Anybody else have any thoughts? Sorry, just do you feel like that's covered here, or you want, because I can add additional recommendations if you're saying that you want the Planning Commission to take into consideration more development kind of near, let's see if I can turn this way. So this path is meant to connect Clinton River and Paint um, Creek, but you're saying like businesses closer to where these actual trails are? Correct, and kind of also okay. like along our park. You know, we have our park and the trail along there, and we're not really utilizing that to its best use to incorporate all of this that would really make it great for people, right? So like along um, Crooks Road there, right before in um, Hamlin, they have restaurants and that that are right off of the trail so you can park your bike and do that. I just think if we start having that top of mind when you're looking at projects when they're coming in, we can actually change the development to make it even better, even along the river and Mill Street and all of that, like so much potential to bring more of that here. But no, I think what you have is good and I'm glad it's been broken down that way. Um, I'm glad that you know the pedestrian folk is to stay in there on Main Street because of course there's not room for everybody to be down there and to keep everybody safe. So, um, but I do think the alleys, the only thing with the alleys of being bike friendly is those big trucks that are through there all the time. So um, I see them daily and you know, so it is more if we had that and we had a good education out there for the people, um, that would actually be good to be able to bike through to avoid Main Street. Do we know how many people are biking two to three times a week, and ride, like, have we ever gotten that information? I don't know. The Trailway Commission keep that Stuart, You think? I don't know. There's I mean, a lot of bike clubs around here, though. That do. No, I, I know there are, but I just I, I wonder. I, I mean, I, I bike a lot in the summer on the Paint Creek Trail, and during the week it's not that busy. On the weekend, it's pretty busy. Posers, eh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but um, no, that's where I, I just part of me wonders, like. What's the ROI? Yeah. In layman's term, yeah. Like, I mean, I'm an accountant, sorry. So that's no. Where it goes. And the other, the other thing with the connecting the trail, the Paint Creek Trail to the, the, the Clinton River. River. Clinton River, thank you. Um, you know, you have to go under the bridge and around the library, and that's really, that's kind of a bottleneck because <coughs> the bikes go too fast and it's a little narrow and stuff. So that's, not, to me, another issue. Yeah, uh, the library um, was part of the committee, and she did bring that up. Yeah, I, was... I mean, it's it's I dangerous. Hmm? I ended up going all through the town trying to find it because I couldn't find signs to show me how to, and that I was, was lost, that came up and too, I just right? so... went the way I thought I was supposed to go, but it was through town. Yeah, so that so and you have to cut through the uh, sunrise and back in there, and that, that's not really Yeah, ideal. Chief Shutnam had brought that up. So it, yeah. it's not, it, it's getting people to, from the trail into town, in and out easily in a safe manner that's efficient and, you know, to Tanya's point, knowing wh where you're going, because otherwise you're kind of do, going in circles. You're getting way more exercise than you want, trying to figure out where you're going. <laughs> um, so that's important, and that's signage, and that's dealing with all that. But, uh, Don, you had a point. One of the uh, situations that I, I've experienced and then we ran into is that there are places that have uh, created pedestrian trails, bike trails, and so forth. So they have separated them. And <clears throat> one of the issues uh, that comes up often when we are dis discussing uh, bicyclists or pedestrians, especially on the like, Paint Creek Trail, you have people that ride the bikes that are probably faster than they should be going sure. on, on the trail. Uh, so in certain cities, they have separated the bike trails where you can bicyclist and then 
pedestrian trails, where they're usually side by side, but they're separated by shrubbery or some sure. sort of uh, type of green space. Mm -hmm. And I know that's difficult when you already have an established uh, uh, structure and infrastructure like we have here. But in the future, like with some of these new developments, uh, that may be something to consider that you get the people walking through all these developments, uh, these apartments and condominiums and everything. We want to improve or uh, not, not improve, but encourage the people to walk from those facilities to the downtown area. Mm -hmm. So the safer and the easier you make it, sure. obviously, uh, the more it's going to get you. Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. I think, um, Chrissy, please. Um, there's a group that we follow, um, Project for Public Spaces. Um, Oakland County sent us to uh, their farmer's market, one we were working on the year-round market. They do a walk, bike, places conference, and they just concluded it in June, and I just saw it show up in my Facebook feed that they just published the conference report. Oh. So I'm thinking maybe if I pull that and yeah, bring yeah. that back here for sure. September, maybe that's something that's interesting. I just pulled it up here. The tracks that they had in there were technology innovations, health equity and access, street adaptation, creative programming, and economic opportunity. So it might help a little bit with the ROI question. Yep. And then the integration of walk bike, which I think we've been talking about a little bit. Maybe there's some more information. I'm not very well versed in either of these things, but sure. I'm happy to pull the report and see if there might be something we can cherry pick out sure. of there to give us That'd some direction. Fun. So in terms of overall um, a thought bubble here with respect to, to um, what the planners have come up with, does anybody have any feedback that you think ought to be included in, in this when we present to the Planning Commission, or do you think directionally this is correct? Because a lot of things that Ann was talking about really is going to become from planning, understanding that we're just, you know, our, our, our sole focus here is to support the downtown and to drive business downtown, right? So we have, we're, we're kind of jaded in that aspect. So the planning part is really what's going to be the most important. Mm -hmm. um, but if there's anything here that either you're um, uh, not comfortable with or you think we ought to, augment now would be the time to add that um, I will say that during our subcommittee meeting when we were talking about this um, uh, before Chief Shettenhelm we, we talked about obviously not having enough real estate but trying to figure out ways and the chief felt confident he could come up with ways where people would have specific biking areas or demark of where to go a different color you know path on the road or whatever so I, I think this gets at that um, the sausage making part, I guess we can deal with later, but um, I just didn't, I wanted to make sure before we pitched this and, and flipped it over to planning that everybody was in sort of agreement that, you know, it was a good thing to encourage bike traffic and foot traffic off the trail into downtown for all the obvious reasons. Yeah. Um, so if there's a nod of heads there. Um. I just, a comment, because I did see a bicyclist today um, um, trying to get through and around where the um, trailhead is there mm -hmm. past Ra Ra. Yeah. And there's a gap to where they have to get on the road. Right. And yeah, we talked about that with Yeah, Chief, so. so that's that also is, you know, just safety like right there too. So we'll work with, I think let's work with the, uh, uh, with council and planning commission trying to figure out ways because it's going to be, you know, I don't want to study this thing to death. It's just going to, we can have a little subcommittee and get through it ourselves. But um, I think, Christy, for our purposes, let's kind of make a mental note for uh, goals and objectives to, uh, deal with signage and um, sort of directional stuff of getting people on and off the trails, how to get to downtown, that sort of thing. And I think that'll that'll be the part that we can help the most with. And then, um, and in support of planning commission in the, of councils, you know, desire to, to do whatever they're going to do. Well, in their discussions, have you discussed having that other um, bridge go over to connect um, the east side to the trail? Um, that was brought up a long time ago. Yeah, I mean, that's always, here. you know, it's if, you know, we hit Powerball, we can go after <laughs> that one. So if we can get some of the free Biden bucks, maybe we can uh, flip some over there to do that. I, I think it was a funding thing more than anything else. Okay. Um, I, I, I know, and I know you guys already know, but, you know, we blew through our fund balance in support of COVID response. Right. So um, the cupboard is kind of bare right now. But uh, this, once again, is we're talking about the future. So let's, if, if everybody's comfortable and good with this, I think we can go ahead and move on because. Okay. Another big topic was parking. We actually had a sub consultant on our team who did additional um, analysis. And I'm sure this will be a much larger conversation between the DDA and the city as this goes on. But, um, you know, in general, he was saying that the city's operating at quite a large loss every year. Um, and part of this is to 
pretty low parking rates and also very generous fines. So you don't get fined until your sixth offense. And when you do, it's only $10, I believe. So he was looking into that and um, saying that if the city ever wanted to privatize its parking, it it can't, no one's going to take it on at a loss. So we have to figure out how to, to balance that. Um, and then some more forward thinking ideas were um, designing m mobility hubs, adding EV charging stations. Um, so mobility hub, if that's a new term to anyone, is basically these kind of like micro, these little nodes where um, you can really focus different types of modes of transit. And so as ride sharing apps become more popular, you know, maybe there's nodes where there's pick up and drop off. Um, and then there, there are those electric scooters or there's bike racks or there's nice paths to get you where you need to go. Um, and so there's kind of nodes scattered around that um, they believe um, is really the future um, as parking you know, parking may wane as m fewer people buy cars and continue to opt to just ride share to most most places. Okay, um, so another plan that we pulled in was the sustainability framework that was done um, 2018, I believe, and recently a few things were updated. Um, so they define sustainability broadly. There's six different areas, and one of them was downtown viability. And these are the different kind of indicators that they looked at, workforce development, historic preservation, business attraction, and parking efficiency. And mainly what I just wanted you all to know here is that we looked at all of those indicators, and we integrated them throughout the plan where they made the most sense. So I put the page numbers here. If you have a draft, when the, when the draft is released, then you can see where all of these are mentioned. Because there's not a specific downtown chapter, um, these are incorporated, like I said, where they make the most sense. But um, these indicators were retained and then if we had updated numbers, they're not that old. Like I said, 2018, we updated them. But otherwise, we generally used their baseline. So for example, workforce development, they're looking at number of jobs and they're looking at the percentage of mixed use businesses. They have a baseline. So in 2018, the numbers they found for that. And then give you a general direction in which way that should go to be sustainable. So those are also in the master plan. Uh, Michelle, can I ask you a quick question? Oh, sorry, mm -hmm. go ahead. Okay. Go. Ladies first. Oh, um, sorry, I'm going to put on my PSD hat for a second. I noticed under regional number of event days, you're recommending re maintain baseline. Why would that be? Well, I'll be perfectly honest about this. This was written by another firm a few years ago. Um, they are the planners of record for the community. and because this, the master plan update wanted to include sustainability, we decided with the city that we would use their factors for sustainability. So I'm assuming a few years ago that that number came from conversations with you all or conversations with staff, but I don't think that has to be set in stone. If that, if you guys feel like that should be increased or decreased, we can do that. I just know that the 56 is wrong. Yeah. Because that's like big bright. <laughs> Got it. So <laughs> In terms of event days, but baseline, I mean, I just feel like to grow, and, yeah, there's a lot, we have a lot of demand for more. Is that number way off, like way too high or way too low? Way too low. It's like half. That's yeah. number's half. So, Christy, why don't you take a cut at uh, going through this and updating it? Michelle, out of curiosity, you, you'd kind of mentioned that there was no downtown chapter in our master plan. In other communities that you do, do they actually have a, a dedicated chapter for downtown, or is it? Um, that depends. I mean, sometimes it's folded into a broader, like, economic development conversation. Um, I will say that all of these different things that we're talking about tonight are in the plan, so they are addressing issues of downtown. They're just not in one spot, so. That's what I was kind of getting at. Is yeah. it easier for everybody? wants to, you know, focus on downtown type stuff to have it in one spot. So 
um, perhaps that'd be one other thing. But so I guess Christy, take a cut at this, and then you know you have uh, really more access to data than anybody in this room. So whatever you do, just you know before it gets to planning, make sure that you're satisfied with it. And yeah. I guess I could speak for the board and listen, but but I don't think we need to see it again. Um, just go ahead and flip it out. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Okay, and then we get into zoning, right, which is kind of one of the, the main tasks of the Planning Commission. So I just wanted to show you all that um, basically between these two maps, the one on your left is the, the DDA boundaries, which if there's been any changes to those, let us know. Um, and then secondly, our future land use map. So that is, you know, kind of the step before the zoning map. It's when we're envisioning what we want our land uses to look like in the future. This is the exercise we go through is, you know, creating categories and drawing them on the map where they, where we'd like to see them. And so I just wanted to point out here that there are not any major changes here. So um, what was taken from the last plan and carried over is that you have your downtown core. So that's like the maroon color here. And then it's surrounded by what we're calling a downtown interface. And that's really just sort of a transition out of like your most intense commercial uses and traffic. Um, and then on the back side of them, you know, kind of enveloping the downtown core, we're still allowing commercial uses, but we're sort of, you know, phasing out as we get closer to where people may live. And that's how it is now. And the only thing I think, if we also put all of these in words that we talked about is, um, talking about specific uses that are not appropriate for a downtown. So we want to continue to make sure that drive-throughs, for example, or maybe heavy auto-related uses, that those are not permitted um, in the downtown. So this is the, the language that's in the master plan about what our downtown core and our downtown interface, um, you know, what we'd like to see in the future. N we don't want to change anything in your downtown. You guys are doing an excellent job. So no Chick Fil A in downtown. <laughs> Rochester Hills. Rochester Hills is, is working with yeah, that. At least it doesn't have a drive-through. The Long John Silver. But they actually bring in parking. <laughs> uh, so um, uh, with respect to the interface, so this would in effect be you know um, current like I always say half housing, half you know businesses in old houses on you know, Walnut on Pine uh, and then on the other side. So it's kind of like the uh, transition into downtown. So what you're saying is that there's really been no material change from what's in the current plan to what um, what we're talking about here and you don't see anything that we ought to be thinking about. Uh, we've already covered it, basically. That's correct. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, so now we can talk about the, the scheduling and then just so everyone here is aware that there is a project website. Um, so that's where we post, you know, the community engagement events. When the draft is ready, it'll go up there. Um, there is a contact us page. Those emails go directly to me. So if you want to, you can send them to me directly or you can go to this site and any comments will come to me. Um, Sienna as well has been my primary liaison to the staff um, and so she funnels things to me her and I work very closely so if you are around her or feel more comfortable talking to her she's um, another person you can send your comments to so in terms of the timeline um, the master plan has uh, a very specific process that it has to follow by the state statute so first this will go to the Planning Commission they will recommend that it goes to council to approve for distribution, not to approve the plan. Then council will approve by resolution that it goes into a 63 day review period. And that's meant to be the public review. It's gonna be posted online. Um, it'll be a physical copy will be at the city hall so that the, the public has two months, a little longer, to send in comments, we will track all of those and then we bring them to the public hearing. We're not mandated necessarily to include every single thing that we get, but we do need to read it into the public record. And that creates, you know, that creates some conversation about if that's a valid point and oversight, then we have that time to incorporate it. So, um, 
as a Im- very important you know, board in the city, your comments, um, we'd love to receive your comments ideally this month or there's two ways we can do this. During the 63 day review period, you can send things in. This is sort of what we were talking about last time. But if your preference is to, you know, wait until next meeting, solidify any additional comments that you may have, um, you know, get me the data, then I believe we can do it that way. We just updated the schedule. So I think we can accommodate both. Yeah. I think uh, the original schedule had this trying to get through the entire process before November's city council election. And I was like, well, let's, I understand the, the rationale of that, but I think this is more important to do it right that way. So um, I think for right now, um, when's planning going to see this? Well, that sort of, um, I guess depends. Hey, we, everything that we see here, we're good with. Right. With then it would go a much, it would, if you guys said tonight, this is perfect, we're good to go, it would probably go to the very next planning commission meeting. Uh, which is? Tomorrow. Oh, shit. <laughs> but, uh, uh, That's so fast. The Sorry. beginning of September. Would be the next. Oh, got it. Okay, we have a so, special one tomorrow for the community. Oh yeah. House. Okay. Um, so the reg- next regularly scheduled meet, uh, meeting for planning is the first Monday in September. Correct. Or first, first Tuesday in September or, yeah. because of the yeah, holiday. holiday. Right. So okay. Um, what I'd like to do is we, we've digested this. There's a significant number of board members that aren't here. I want to give them an opportunity to to last call. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Christy's got to do her thing with respect to the numbers. So why don't we do this? Uh, we'll send a communication out to the board along with, with your with this deck again and say, hey, look, we went through it. We'll have a discussion in a minute. I'm just kind of trying to think ahead. Um, and to the extent that the, there's any changes, um, I'll ask to have those uh, sent to Christy uh, no longer by the close, uh, no later than the close of business next Friday. Yeah, that should be fine. I think the, the planning commission packets probably just go out a week ahead of time. Yeah, so sure. as long as and we got the holiday and stuff too. So I think that'll work out well. So Christy, why don't we go ahead and do that? Well, you can make your changes. Uh, everybody kind of digest what we've talked about tonight. Is there anything that anybody has seen that's causing heartburn or you would like to change or do we want to have some time to just sort of gnaw on it? Let's gnaw on it. So uh, we'll have it for you a week from Friday. Uh, Christy will send it to you directly. It'll be a cumulative thing with any comments from the rest of the board along with the edits that she's going to make to that um, statistical sheet. Once that's good, um, uh, once everybody's happy, or everybody's had a chance to make their comments, uh, I would like us to, and I don't know how to do a pre-motion to do that, but, and I don't know if they need a physical motion or if they just want to say this is our recommendation. Um, what I'm trying to do is to give the Planning Commission some sort of formal, you know, saying the board took this action, um, and I don't know if it needs to be a formal motion or if we can just say, uh, we're directionally satisfied with how this is going. We have a few changes. We're going to let this go. Um, so maybe just send a quick note to planning. Yep. Uh, and then if, if for whatever reason, you know, planning says, well, we need a formal motion, and I'll just, you know, call a quick meeting and we'll sure. do it. I mean, Stuart, are you okay with planning if we just send a memo just yeah. highlighting what we I don't we did? think we need an official, official resolution. I, I'm going to guess this isn't going to be on the sep- September Okay. Um, planning committee, you know, only because it takes, you know, it takes a while to, and it's getting getting closer to the. What did David Becker say? Well, about I'd have to check. I mean, we have a just, very just specific okay. schedule lined out, so, um, and we just changed it, so I don't remember the exact dates. But I think ideally, we probably would want to have it, if possible, at the next planning commission meeting. Um, I'll well, talk we'll, to we'll staff. do our part. Whatever happens after that is out of our control. So, um, so let's go ahead. Uh, send a note out to the entire board saying that we've seen this presentation. Uh, we, uh, I think, mm-hmm. I guess I'll try and speak for everybody, but I think on balance we're very comfortable with the work that's been done thus far. There's nothing glaring standing out, although we want to have a little bit of time to digest it. Uh, and then you will receive a communication from Christy uh, by the close of business next Friday. I don't know what the date is. Um, uh, that will be the, the total s- sum of the thoughts from the DDA with respect okay. to that. You can send that along to the planning along with it and say, you know, um, the DDA is, is largely, is, is on board with this, okay. and there was nothing glaring, so. Okay. Good? 27th. 27th, okay. Yeah. And then I just had one point, is just, and just so everybody knows that the part you talked about, the 
theoretic housing thing you talked about mm -hmm. that that's just in theory that has not been decided we don't want that out that oh yeah you, you know anything like that that we're gonna, the woods, clearly a work it was we're just clearly low, a workshop right yeah. we're not having low income housing being built and you know we we just want don't want that stuff to it's all in theory to be talked about it's all got to get through planning and council and, and council, stuff like right. that. We so need a, we need an application. For sure, that. right? <laughs> Somebody to pay for it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so thank you so much for coming tonight. We really appreciate it. Does there anybody else have any other further questions for Michelle? Or we can send her off. Good. Are you driving to Ann Arbor? It's not that bad. It's I did minutes, it a lot. Ninety minutes from here to Ann Arbor. <clears throat> now it'll be less. Yeah. I mean, when I leave around five to five thirty, it's there's. Some backups, but right now it'll be fine. I, I've gotten there in an hour ten from my drive. I will. Ha I will say, Pizza Bob sounds pretty good right now to me. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I'm hoping for an hour and ten myself. I, yeah, that's pretty optimistic. Now she'll get it hammered down. You're good. Thank you so much for that. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you all for your time. Good. <laughs> you betcha. Thank you. Um. Uh, okay. Uh, downtown visioning session, Christy. So I placed this right after Michelle intentionally because right. uh, I thought that this would be of value for everyone. So um, for anyone who's new to the board or you may have heard of this back when we did it about four years ago, our community development committee, which is a committee of this board, held what we called a downtown visioning session. And the idea was that we felt that downtown was in pretty good shape and doing pretty good. But what else was there? What else could we do? What is that next level? And so we got together, I believe it was about 120 people. I can get into the logistics of exactly how those people got to that room but we did a wide cross section of the community it was people from Rochester Rochester Hills and Oakland Township business owners property owners employees elected officials and then people from key organizations like the chamber the museum historical society all those types of people converged in this room uh, that we did it over at the Royal Park Hotel and we asked people to base three basic questions and they were you know what brings you downtown what would bring you downtown and we had like maps of the city and said, you know, just kind of forget what's there. If you, you know, if you want to redevelop the gas station, that's one of your top three things and look at that. So as we went through the whole process and took lots of notes on everything, the things that came out of that is people love downtown, but they needed more reasons to come here. They wanted more places to gather with their friends and neighbors. And they liked the idea of a year round farmer's market. And so that's what put us on the path that became the front porch project that became the year round market project, all those different things. So the reason community development was talking about this, because they do like the front porch stories and some of the other projects, um, was that we felt like since, as Ben noted, we have gone through that fund balance that we are saving for the front porch, maybe it's a good time to check back in with the community to see, is this still what everybody wants? Is this still on your radar or what is on your radar? So uh, we talked to our friends at Main Stroke and County and they've been kind enough. They are going to fund the entire visioning session. So it'll be a zero net effect on the DDA's budget. Um, we're bringing in uh, a moderator from the outside because that seemed to work really well last time because it's somebody from the outside that knows a little bit about the community but isn't going to be invested in certain things. Uh, so Ben Muldrow from a branding firm out of South Carolina, Arnett Muldrow, is going to be coming in to be our moderator. Um, and he'll be funded by Oakland County as well as all the food, beverage, room rental, and everything over at the hotel. Uh, so community development is working on this starting this Friday. We're having our committee meeting to figure out the process, the invitations, the look, all that kind of stuff to put everything out. It's scheduled for September 29th at the Royal Park Hotel from 6 to 9. So from 6.30 to 9 will be uh, check-in for, or excuse me, 6, 6 to 6.30 will be check-in, get everybody seated. It's a light dinner. I think we're doing like pasta salad, something like that. And then from 7 to 9 is when we'll do the work. And so Ben already has some interesting ideas, kind of building on what we did last time uh, with just the basic questions. But he also has some interactive that people are going to be able to do real-time um, interaction and input from their phones that we'll be able to see up on the screen. So um, we're excited. We'll have a bigger update for you guys come September. But uh, we think it's going to be good because a lot of things that we got of that, we got obviously the bigger ideas, but we got a lot of low-hanging fruit. And maybe that's something that will help us going into goals and objectives in January as well and then to help us make some decisions if front porch is still in our future or maybe there's something else or maybe that's what it is. So we don't know. Right now it's just front seat. Yes. yes. Front chair. <laughs> yes. It's just like a stoop. Exactly. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll get back there. So, no, that's yes. great. Um, in terms of uh, representation from, you know, the board, obviously we'd want to have, you know, yes. if you guys could make it, that'd be great. I'm going to 
uh, um, do everything in my power to be there. So, um, so thank you for that. Mm -hmm. And when she said Ben, that wasn't me. I'm not that artistic. So right. that's, that's uh, ben Muldrow. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, so thanks for that. We appreciate it. And the timing mm -hmm. couldn't be better because of what we're going through right now. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, the outcome of that, and we can talk about it at that visioning session, but as I said, we'll be in the 63-day shot clock for uh, the review process. So anything that comes out of that, we can go ahead and incorporate. And in fact, uh, make a note when you send this over to, um, to Michelle that that placeholder for the 2021 stuff, yep. to the extent that we change it as an outcome of this mm -hmm. uh, September meeting, we'll, we'll edit that. So just leave it now for as a placeholder, but uh, yep. let's see how it goes. Uh, DIA mural oh, I'm, can I, I'm sorry, oh, sure, can I have yeah, one more sorry, thing? Go. I was just going to say um, deliverables out of the um, September visioning session, if they're like what we did last time, is that um, we did a summary, we did a report out to all of the attendees so they know what we did. Um, CMN TV, we'll be reaching out to them. They filmed the whole thing and it was streaming on the cable channel, it was streaming here in City Hall, so people, if they couldn't attend, had an opportunity to see it there. And then we did a report out here at City Council and at Planning Commission. Okay, good. So we'll, we will do that again? Yes, um, so we'll take it on the road, for sure. Never do enough road shows. <laughs> yes. All right, cool. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. Uh -huh. uh, anything else? Not on that one. Okay, good. Uh, DIA mural project. So uh, this is something I think you guys may, if you want to search your memory back, back to uh, 2020, uh, early spring. It was actually at the holiday time of 19 that we heard about this, that the DIA had approached Pink Creek Center for the Art to locate a mural or an, a piece of art in downtown Rochester. So at the time, it would have been either sculpture or a actual physical mural. Um, as discussions went on with Pink Creek, um, Amanda uh, from Council, who works with DIA, had looped Nick and I in, as well as the people at Pink Creek, and started having some meetings to talk about process and locations and some opportunities. Uh, the DIA really centered in on the D DTE wall. If you're not familiar with that, it's that big white wall in the East 200 block between Good year in the beauty corner. Um, it's had grasses there, it's had arborvitaes, everything dies or is stolen, so it is now just rock, and that seems to be working fine for everyone. Um, so DIA um, reached out to DTE and has worked with them, and they have allowed us, or allowed them the opportunity to go ahead and use that wall for a mural. So um, the DIA, on behalf of Pink Creek, had sent out a community survey in early 2020, before everything happened, to get an idea of if there was going to be a mural in town, what elements or what themes or anything would be something that would be of interest. And uh, the overwhelming theme that came across was nature because of our trails, our parks, mm -hmm. waterways, all of that. And so all of that came through pretty strong. So what you see in your packet, um, the DIA has um, procured an artist and he's been working with the committee. And this is what he's come up with. This is this latest rendering that's going around. Um, obviously it's incorporating the pollinators with our milkweed, the rainbow trout, which Nick is very proud of, and then uh, the blue heron. I don't know if everybody realizes, but we have a blue heron rookery um, in the city of Rochester, in case you didn't know. So there you go. So these are the elements that they've been working with. Um, Jacob Dwyer is the artist I included in this package. There is a um, statement about why he chose um, the elements and to do the mural in this style and then a little bit of his background of what he's done. He This is at no cost to Pink Creek, the city or the DDA. This is all going to be covered by the DIA. Uh, the only thing that they're asking for specifically from the DDA, number one, um, to help coordinate so that we will have facilities for him to um, wash his brushes, store his equipment in between the times that he's going to be painting, which he's uh, potentially talking about in the month of September. They think this would be about a 10 day project to actually paint this. Um, so he would need help just coordinating those types of things. Um, they were, DIA would really like to, to be some kind of small artist reception, whether that's out on the street or something we could do at the studio. Oh, yes, I do at the studio. Yeah, so something good. that's very easily, something that we could accommodate. Um, and then last but not least, so that we would be assisting if there is any damage, maintenance needed, anything like that, the DIA would work with the DDA to get the artist back out here and to fix anything that's going on. Yeah, I was thinking about that, as you said, about the... Uh the security. I mean, yes. you can't legislate morality, right? So it's just un it's unfortunate yes. but we have to deal with it. Yes. Um, so this, more than anything, is just informational. This is going to land at council shortly. We're just waiting on um, DIA is circulating this internally to make sure that they're good with it. Same thing with DTE. Right. But I figured since we were meeting in August, I didn't want to wait 
till the end. So we're actually the first body that I think is officially seeing it. What do you think the um, uh, the exposure of the DDA would be financially to you know get the guy back in here and somebody you know does it, something? It foolish? seems very minor. What he told us is that um, any mural that he paints, they think that it has um, at least a ten year life before it have to get touched up, but possibly longer. He uses I'm talking all about the graffiti or whatever else you know. I don't know that there's much. I I asked that question and they said they haven't had that in any community that that's happened and. We get a few tags around town, but nothing. No. But we don't SLP? have any public art at this point, place. so it's hard to say. I I can't speak for yeah. people, but I would hope not. But I don't. I would think it's minor because what we would do is add his additional shirt on our insurance, and so it'd yeah. be covered through right, that. So I guess the communication to council would be, um, you know, subject to their you know approval of letting this happen. It's happening on a private building, mm -hmm. and the DDA agrees to you know absorb the miscellaneous costs, which we don't expect to be a ton. Right. Um, just so the council doesn't, you know, think they're going to get stuck holding the bag. I, I, I thought we already approved of this, but it maybe I'm... apparently not is my understanding. I think that we were on the path, and then everything got shut down, right. and so they stopped working on this in okay. April is it of be last on year. Coming up, this meeting. Uh, meeting? It's not on this next meeting. I think it's probably in September because we're still waiting for DIA and DTE to sign off. Okay. So it wasn't on the agenda I saw yesterday at Department Head. So I think it'll probably I guess be September. Just, I mean, uh, let's all open up for discussion if anybody's got any thoughts. Mm -hmm. No, I, I don't think that it, that would have, um, you know, the opportunity to actually have somebody like destroy it. No one's even touched the um, butterfly. And that's a very popular area there with everybody going in and out of there. Yep. So I don't see that. I haven't seen any in downtown when I go through downtown. So I think some people will be Just there the to bridge. admire it and take pictures I think with, so too. with them behind. We have so many people getting taking pictures up against just black our regular walls of the businesses downtown, yeah. which yeah. is really cool. Yes. In Rochester University, they haven't done anything to that mural. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'm being on Main Street, it's maybe there's good it's karma, and I'm I'm just grateful for that. Mm -hmm. So, it's, it's um, so exciting. I guess the communication would be to council when this does get on the agenda, just let them know that um, on balance we're, we're obviously in, in great support of this, and we thank yeah. you know Amanda for her efforts yeah. in this regard, and uh, we agree to uh, you know handle all the miscellaneous you know uh, stuff. And in, in, in terms of the party, I can't imagine that being you know a, a it's probably thing, pretty so. minor. We're yeah, we'll get Chris to donate all the food. It'll be great. So. <laughs> Yes, I was hoping we might um, ask to close uh, Third Street right there if it's nice. It just oh, yeah, that'd depend. be fun. And we that may have to fun. if the things change with the... You never know. I mean, having things in door, and plus we're a couple blocks down now, so it might not be as desirable. Oh, but if true. it's something that we could do right there and do like a ribbon cutting and do like well, I have full shooting. confidence you and the staff making something awesome happen. So I'm We sure like to be, throw a party, yes. It'll be great. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else? Not on that one. All right, good deal. Uh, downtown Capital Projects update. Nick, who's not here, so. Me again. I have a memo from Mr. Nick, so I apologize in advance. There's two items um, that he wanted me to. One is an update on the sidewalk paving, and the other is a request to the board. So I'll start with the first one, and I'll skim through pretty quickly so that you guys don't have to listen to everything that he wrote here. But um, we're in the last phase of replacing all of the sidewalks within the DDA district. You may recall that we made that motion a couple meetings ago to go ahead and just allocate monies out of our fund balance that was set aside for capital projects to just take care of all of the sidewalks in town because we were able to get a favorable bid. Um, and that's what he noted here. Um, so everything has been replaced and they are currently working um, in the area behind where CrossFit and Firestone and all of that is to fix that area because that was probably the worst in terms of the heaving bricks and all of those pavers. Um, they've also been working on removing and replacing some of the honey locust trees that were up in that area that were caught up in wires and things like that. And they're going to be expanding some landscaping beds behind Sergeant Appliance that will be able to um, put more appropriate trees in place and give the existing greenery a better chance to survive. Um, all locations where possible were put in new um, handicap access ramps and domes. And actually East Street on the east side of East Street actually has a curb now. It's exciting. They're real happy about it. They haven't had a curb in quite some time. So that is um, essentially everything. So that should be finished by the end of the summer. Um, you may have noticed that there has been, they haven't been the um, cleanest in terms of contractors, they're very fast, but they're a little on the sloppy side. So we've been documenting areas that they need to go back and power wash and clean because, for instance, they did get a lot of slurry all over our brand new light poles that we put in just last year. I sidewalks in my sub, and I can attest to that 100%. Yes, so they are not great at that, but uh, we, they've been working with us on all of that. So that uh, so we really, other than maintaining and maybe minor sidewalk replacements for unforeseen things, we should be in pretty good shape on sidewalks for the foreseeable future for the DDA district. 
Um, the second part of this, speaking of our fund balance, as you know, we have been putting a quarter million dollars aside every year for infrastructure, working with the city on projects. They have a project that's going to be coming up, and this one I am going to read because it's got a lot of things to it. But this is specifically for East 2nd Street. It says, the city received for the third year in a row a grant from Oakland County to continue on the short-term fix for Letica from Parkdale to the Paint Creek River Bridge at this point. The new grant will allow the city to finish resurfacing the easternly DDA boundary at Water Street. Staff is requesting that the DDA board consider completing the rest of the resurfacing up to Main Street as a part of this project to take advantage of the great pricing we got. The city's portion of the partially funded grant is $55,638, and the DDA's portion will be $35,474 per the acceptable low bid. Nick would ask that the DDA board ask to spend not to exceed $40,000 on the Second Street project by way of a motion that would then be taken to city council at the next meeting for a budget adjustment. The dollars are available in the capital dollars fund found within your existing fund balance. Yes. That's from Mr. Nick. So basically, it's about 200 feet, is my understanding, is what we would be connecting. 200 from. feet for 40 grand, huh? That's what I'm here, yes. We are in the wrong business, my friends. Get out of the accounting business and get into the road building business. Yes. Um, so that is the request from Mr. Nick. All right, very good. So, uh, board, any thoughts? Sounds good to me. <laughs> was that a motion? Yeah. Yes. Okay, motion. great. <laughs> motion to spend forty th up to forty thousand dollars on water, water Street. Okay. Uh, Second so, Street. Second Street. Yes. Is, is there support for that motion? Support. Thank support you. Support by Eric Diana. Uh, discussion. Okay, this one would be a voice vote since, yes. Since since we're spending money. Since we're spending money. Okay, hold on. Let me get me. Thing again okay and they have the contractor picked out correct yes i have that quote right here it is uh bowen paving inc yep. is the low bidder yes okay mm -hmm. yes okay are we ready okay. ben giovanelli yes mayor bixon yes bob bloomingdale no no okay somebody's got to vote no <laughs> <laughs> okie dokie uh tanya karsten yes eric diana yes lisa germani williams yes motion passes okay Right. Even with our dissent, this is great. <laughs> this is this is democracy in action. It is. Sorry, I didn't mean to. I, did, I wasn't judging. I'm sorry. <laughs> that just kind of took me by surprise. No, he's, I'm sure that. Uh, in the minutes, it'll say undue pressure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> totally. So funny. Uh, all right, so we're good there. Downtown Capital. Anything else from Mr. Nick, who's not here to defend himself? Nothing else from Mr. Nick. Right, very good. Uh, Butterfly Garden Expansion Project. So I'm on here only because Marilyn's not here. So I um, had a conversation with Marilyn. Actually, we were talking about um, uh, the master plan because she wasn't going to be here this evening. And, and she had relayed to me that um, there's going to be a ribbon cutting uh, on August 23rd at 4 p.m. Uh, to celebrate the expansion of the Butterfly Garden um, in Municipal Park. Hey. Uh, right. Um, and, and she wanted to thank the GDA for its support um, back when we first inter inter when she first introduced the idea back at the GDA and the goals and objectives in 2019. So uh, she will be doing a shout out f for the GDA there. So I wanted to uh, a thank her for acknowledging that, and then also obviously thank her for um, her tireless efforts in this regard over the course of time. And uh, uh, Tenacious D has done a great job with respect to all of her work uh, in there. So I wanted to. Um, a, extend the invitation out to everybody to join Swing By uh, on Monday if you are um, in the area uh, to support Maryland and uh, to, um, you know, take part in the garden expansion. So that is that. Is that. So we'll hopefully see you uh, a week from all right, this coming Monday. Um, uh, regular reports, uh, executive director update, Madam Director. I just had uh, one addition to my report. Um, we just confirmed with Pat McKay that the museum is going to, once again, doing a historic items display in the studio. So they'll be doing that. It'll be ready to go um, by September 1st, but possibly sooner. They're pulling together their plan, but that was really popular last time we did it. We had the old DNC letters. Oh, cool. We had some boxes from Mitzelfeld, some bottles from the dairy, some really cool stuff. So he's trying to do something a little different for us. So we'll see what he comes up with this that's time. That's cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, that's awesome. And I, that's, of course, at no cost to us yeah for sure I uh, my, so my sister and uh, my nephew and, and my sister's um, significant other were in town uh, visiting about two weeks ago we were downtown and uh, they were just marveling at the pictures of you know what it was back in the day you know how cool that was so all of the things that we do to try and incorporate the history of the community into you know it, it was somebody from completely out of town from LA that's like wow that is awesome I wish they'd do that by us so anywho um, just wanted to pass that along, but thank you for that. Anything else? 
not, that's not your report? I don't believe so. I mean, we're full steam ahead right now on everything holiday. So that's, Got it. that's so where that, we are. So that's rolling into events and marketing then? Sure. Yep. Rolling into events and marketing. So actually the marketing kits will be going out to all the merchants for everything going on for fall and holiday. We shot for Taste of Fall uh, last month, and that's being funded through the monies that we got through the American Express Shop Small or uh, Order In Shop Small Challenge. Um, so that's funding that for the uh, Taste of Fall promotion. Um, something else that um, PSD is working on that will be incorporated into all that. They're bringing in some interesting new promotions, including a pancake and PJs event that they're going to do a pancake dinner at the fire hall okay. which i think is going to be super fun and then also we're doing a 12 days of christmas cookie stroll where uh, it's a fundraiser for love local where actually people will purchase a cookie tin they'll come and pick up the tin from us and then they'll go around to 12 different shops and pick up a cookie all different of course we're going to be working on the sampling of that next month we're kind of excited about that um but yes so we're working on that so we're trying to incorporate some new interesting and different promotions and right now we're working with a couple groups to see if we might be able to get going on that buy one get one gift certificate campaign mm. that we did last year at psd so we're trying to see if we can get some funding to make that go because with that we were able between mid-november and end of december rate we actually sold over a hundred thousand dollars in gift certificates for downtown last year which was pretty incredible so and got quite a few people in from that we i mean, we get stacks back <laughs> from people they really uh, were great for us so we're working on a lot of those types of things, lots of promotional-based things that aren't really big dollars in terms of expenditure, but we're hoping they're small expenditure, high impact. Sure. And then just as a side note, um, Jenna had approached me, and I'm very proud to say that we have submitted a joint application to National Main Street to do a session Ooh, for the nice. conference next year. Good. I was very excited. So, yes. So hopefully we get picked. So we'll see. But yes. And, you know, John mentioned it when he's here, but, you know, we tend, because we're on the cutting edge of so many different things and, and uh, everything, I say everything we do t turns to gold. But, I mean, a lot of the stuff that, that you work on is highly successful. So being a benchmark is important. So that's actually a, uh, that's great. It's a, it's, a, it's a well deserved. So to kind of go up there and uh, share what, what we do with others. So um, we'll see if they pick us. We'll, yeah, we'll let right. you know. <laughs> uh, anything else? No. All right. Do you have, uh, just uh, my quick question on restaurants, just sort of on balance. What's the word on the street? How's everybody doing? Um, so a couple different things. I'm sure Tanya can share her different experiences. But speaking for uh, some of the larger restaurants, they're doing well. The restaurants that were able to maintain a robust carryout business were able to maintain their staff, and that has helped them go through. Mm -hmm. um, some of them employ a lot of college kids. That is going to be a big sting yeah, coming, coming up in up. the next couple of weeks, yeah. that's going to be a problem. So you see, um, yeah, so mm -hmm. they're um, having a few issues in that way. But on balance, in talking with, I mean, we are just, when we were doing the shooting last week, we were in yeah, probably about, you know, 17 different restaurants. Everybody's hanging in there. They're feeling good. Some people are still talking about, you know, limiting their hours that they might close on Mondays or, you know, just kind of do things like that to just help everything work. Um, they're feeling pretty good is what I've heard. We were just in Lettuce, which is the newest restaurant addition to town. They're very happy to be here. Um, really nice people. Um, we were talking with um, Armand and Lisa from Brunch House, and they're looking at St. 1881, which is looking gorgeous if you haven't gone by it. Oh. They are still on target. They want to be open sometime this fall. So, I mean, on balance, we're feeling pretty good with what's happening downtown. We're not hearing any rumblings that anyone's on their way out, okay. which is a good thing. Sure. Um, so, our retail uh, businesses have been letting us know that they're having a little concern about supply chain issues sure, yeah. coming with holiday merchandise, things like that, things that they will not be able to restock and reorder. So they're getting things, but they're wondering how long they're going to last. That's something we've been talking about with the magazine where you have to be very cautious about what we shoot, that it's something that when it, we shoot it in October, it's still available in November. Good point. So just different challenges, but overall, I mean, we only have a couple spaces available mm -hmm. downtown right now, and that's because one... One business moved to Rochester Hills to be closer to their other business, and the other business expanded and took up a bigger space. So we're really in, in fairly good shape right now. I mean, I think, as I've said before, I think that we'll be good through holiday, and then I think come January, economically, we'll start seeing some changes because I think people want to get through the big, bright season because they can make good money, and then they'll start making some decisions. We've already seen some retirements. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think people will start making some other changes. So we'll just... Well, to the extent that we can get out in front of that, obviously, we, you know, I course. know you and Nick are always on that, but... We're trying. They always mm -hmm. call me Captain Obvious, so I figured I would just uh, point nope, that out. Tanya, is that your same ex your same experience with with your your place? Or? We're sold out more often than we're not. That's great. Yeah, yeah so right. it's hard to get. 
it's staff consistent. Yeah, I know. But yeah, it, yeah, it is in downtown. People aren't, it's not that people aren't coming. They're coming. It's a matter of our businesses being able to mm -hmm. support and serve because of mm -hmm. their current Yeah, we went to uh, meeting house with my sister when she was in town, and, and I could just tell that, you know, the, the, the staff there was going kind of a little, not quite frantic, frantic, but I mean, you could tell they were definitely overloaded. So, yeah. so yeah, we'll continue to, uh, you know, pray and, and, and get everybody sort of back into the groove. And I think we're, we're getting there slowly but surely. So yeah. uh, no setbacks, right? Yeah. Not allowed. Um, all right. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. Um, oh, oh, can I just add one more yeah, thing? Please, I just realized it wasn't no, on my report. Um, front porch stories. I know that Ann already mentioned it, but it is going to be uh, Tuesday, the 24th. It, we're back on Nick's porch, and that will be with Bill Cruz and Casey Cruz. That'd be fun. And they are very excited to do it. Actually, um, apparently Bill LaPuma had been bragging to them back in the day after he did it. Oh, so yeah. they're doing it. And I was speaking with this marketing director. There may be some cruise in your bread or some kind of goodies showing up at some point oh, at the front porch story. Mm -hmm. So it's called marketing. That? Right? Uh, that's from six. Actually, uh, how long do we do that? Six to eight? I thought it was only two hours. It's two hours. Yeah, it's six to eight. Let's yeah. knock on the door of Nickelodeon's bathroom. That's and good. then the chamber has us going to the Lino's. <laughs> mm hmm um, retirement right before that. Okay. So I'll be like hop, skip, jumping around. Sweet. Awesome. <laughs> Anything else? Nope. Okay, very good. Uh, financial report is in the uh, packet. If anybody has any questions, mm -hmm. we can entertain those now or you can reach out to Christy separately on that. Seeing none, biz dev, anything happening? Yeah, actually, we just met today. So they are working on our annual business development. Um, which is our other, we already did one checkbox of an update on what DDA is working on that we have to do for the state. Mm. So this is our second one that we will do with that one. That is going to be on September 20th at the Royal Park Hotel from 6 to 8. Okay. Um, you guys will see a note on that shortly because we just finalized some things on that today. Uh, so we have, um, Nick will do his PowerPoint of all the developments in and around Rochester and a highlight of the things we've worked on this year, like the sidewalks, some of the other things that have happened. I'll put together a PowerPoint that he gives me, and then he will skip around from different slides, and I have to try and catch up with him. It's very exciting, so please come. Because he's talking about something, I'm like, wait, that's slide 17. No, yeah. Going through. Um, and then Tom DeLuzen from She Financial is going to be our guest speaker. We always have a guest speaker, someone from the community that's doing a new development, new project, new to the community, whatever. So Tom DeLuzen from She Financial will be they're talking about their project building their whole hub here and why they chose rochester for that got it so mm -hmm. um uh, let's probably re-perform that for us or for council and then absolutely um, uh, or it, at, at a minimum include include the information but uh, you know tom doesn't have to come and do all three <laughs> uh, but um, i'm sure that he would but yeah, yes <laughs> of course he would yeah because that's the kind of guy he is but yeah all right, no, that's fantastic. Um, and then site de site development, anything cooking? Uh, so we sold a couple more plaques for the wall. Oh, good. Yay. Oh, good. So, um, a, but of course, supply chain, we're having a yeah, slight sure. issue with that. Um, so the turnaround time right now is about 25 working days to get new plaques. So those will be in here sometime next month. They'll be arriving. It's but Moses chipping them from the stone or something? Right? Clearly. So it's a thing. So Tony's really working on some ideas. Um, we did actually, we were approached by um, Roger Knapp. Oh. Um, who is interested in getting back involved with site development and trying to do some stuff. He recently moved back to the city and wants to get more involved in things. So um, I think that we're going to start meeting on the regular again and try to get some momentum. I think Tony's waiting for after the visioning session to see what comes out of that okay. and if there might be some small batch projects that we might be able to capture out of that. All right, good. Very good. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I think we've blown through the agenda an hour and a half of your time, so thank you for that. Is there any other pressing issues of the evening, or are we uh, ready to... Uh, Adjourn and see each other uh, same bad time, same bad station next month. I just say we opened last week. We had the opening for La Macaron. Oh yeah! So they finally yeah. opened yeah, after a year of COVID and stuff. So it looks like a pretty, pretty interesting place. He's a retired automotive guy yeah. who decided to get into the pastry business. So yes. hopefully, yeah. hopefully that works. <laughs> It's, uh, well, the, it looks delicious, so uh, I think it'll be fine. And then I have to get down to lettuce, so that's my next project. Uh, all right, with that, meeting adjourned. All right.